In today's video, let's learn how to secure the JWT tokens. Good news is that it's not that hard because the JWTs are kinda secured out of the box. However, there are several good practices that allows you to increase the security level where JWTs are in use. First, however, let's answer the question of why the JWT itself is safe out of the box. As long as the token issuer and the private key used to sign every of those JWT tokens are safe, the JWT cannot be replicated, cannot be modified, cannot be altered. Good practice number one is, well, to keep the issuer of the tokens safe and secure. For as long as the issuer's servers are not compromised and the private keys have not leaked, the tokens issued by this issuer should be safe. The good practice number two is to remember that the JWT is not a secret and you absolutely never should put any kind of the secret inside of the JWT. JWT should hold only publicly available information. That means the JWT just should never hold the user's private information, password, any kind of the credential access or any kind of the secret that you do not want to leak. JWT is not encrypted, it's only signed. The next good practice is to keep the lifetime of the access and the refresh token short. That means never ever issued a long-lived JWT. If you think that issuing a long-lived JWT is a good idea, think again especially the access token should be a short lift. Of course, it's hard to say what's the maximum allowed lifetime, but let's say never longer than 15 minutes and most probably the five minutes lifetime of the token is something that gives you a nice compromise between the load on the issuer and the security level. And then, if the token will expire, it will no longer be valid. So, long-lived JWT tokens, no, 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 we do not do that over here. Never absolutely ever think that one day, one week or one month valid token is a good idea, because it's not. Security level, basically the same as any other static API key. The next good practice is to ensure that all of your applications and microservices are able to properly understand and implement not before policy. Only with the properly implemented and running not before policy, you are able to invalidate the token by just enforcing the private key change on the server. By the way, there is a link in the description of this video that should give you slightly more information about the topic. And finally, use proper scoping. And that means that every token should include the scope of the expected usage. If the usage does not match, just reject it. Example, tokens issued to the user that are using your web application should include the scope of the web application. And then if the token with the scope of the web application will be used somewhere on your API where the expected scope is different, it will just must not match. If the API is not intended to be used by the web application user, it should be just rejected. And if this user would like to also use your API and the web application, either it should have two separate tokens with two separate scopes or both scopes included into the original token. It's up to you to implement such a security policy in your environment. If you would like to know more about the JWTs and modern authentication and authorization, here is a video for you. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy coding!